Biodiversity is the term used to describe the variety of all life forms on Earth. This includes plants, animals and all the world's habitats. It's the whole fabric of life and it includes us. We're part of this web of life and whether we realise it or not, we rely on it for our survival. We're currently living through the greatest mass extinction event in 65 million years. Species are now disappearing faster than a thousand times the natural background rate. Economists and ecologists are now beginning to work together to try and put an economic value on the free goods and services that natural ecosystems provide us with. The most important of these are freshwater and fertile soil, but they also include photosynthesis, carbon storage, medicine, pollination of crops by bees, protection against erosion and flooding, and the world's biggest service industry, outdoor recreation and tourism. In Ireland, we also depend upon biodiversity for fresh air, clean water, soil fertility and healthy food. These essential elements of life are as threatened here as they are in the rest of the world. How we manage our land has the biggest impact on biodiversity. This means that here in Ireland, our farming practices are critical. Farming practices have actually shaped our landscape, and it's farming that may hold the key to a healthy biodiversity. In the Burren in County Clare, farming to conserve its rich biodiversity has become a viable business practice for an increasing number of farmers. Congella Maguire is the Heritage Officer for County Clare. Congella, how important is biodiversity for County Clare? It's, it's our greatest natural resource. Uh, it's the basis of our landscape. We have beautiful landscape here in Clare. It's the basis of our tourism. Every year, Clare County Council have a programme of habitat mapping. So we do very detailed habitat mapping of um, the greater countryside. So we understand where the, the important ecological features are in any individual farm. So how do you get this information out to the general public in County Clare? We're involved in training initiatives with farmers and with community groups. And we also are fortunate enough to be able to produce publications for landowners and farmers as well. Uh, for instance, this one, the Living Farmland, has gone down very well uh, with the farming community in, in Clare. This booklet can help farmers to make informed choices about how to manage the habitats on their farmland in a way that protects biodiversity, while still remaining flexible in their farming practice. Farmers have to make a living. Uh, the farmer wants good quality grassland to feed his animals and to br maintain an income. So there, there are pressures there to drain wetlands, clear areas of woodland. So those pressures are on the, the biodiversity. If we had to replace those systems with artificial systems, we would have to pay a lot of money. Farmers depend on bees and other insects to pollinate their crops. But bee colonies are declining throughout the world. In 2007, the global cost of replacing insect pollination alone was estimated at $190 billion. We rely on the invisible services of nature, such as pollination, flood protection, and the cleaning of our air and water. Without them, we would struggle to survive. So what sort of species have we got just here? There's a lovely range of species here. Um, Dr. Brendan Dunford heads up the Burn Life Project and the Burn Farming for Conservation Programme which rewards farmers for protecting and enhancing the biodiversity on their farms in the burn. Stuff here is teeming with wildlife. This is the stuff that we love to see on our farms, and this is the stuff we're happy to pay farmers to produce. So the burn landscape now, how did it happen that it came about the way it is, and how did farming influence that? Yeah, I suppose the burn, a lot of people think of it as a natural landscape, but in fact the burn has very much been shaped by people, by farming. Uh, we have evidence of farming going back about 6,000 years. And the first farmers who came here came into a wooded landscape, a pine woodland with hazel underneath. And over the course of many generations, most of the woodland was cleared and the bare rocky burn that we see today was exposed. And that tradition of farming continues today. Uh, most of the farmers here today keep cattle, some sheep, some goats as well. 
How did the Burn Life Project influence farming practice? So the Burn Life Project started off on 20 farms here in the Burn, working with those farmers, asking them, well, how would you better manage this farm to produce more biodiversity and look after the landscape? Those farmers came back with some really good ideas. Then we tested those ideas in those 20 farms, looked at how it worked out for biodiversity, for the farmer's income, for the animal health, and kept adapting over time until we came up with a system, a blueprint for farming in the barn, which produces good food, but also produces a really healthy environment. These meadows here, we advocate that they're rested during the flowering season, so the plants can set seed. They're harvested in late summer, and then um, the farmer grazes them off in wintertime. And that allows biodiversity a chance to thrive, and it also provides the farmer with a good source of income and food for his cattle as well. And it's a very nice project because it's very simple, and it's a reward-based system. The more the farmer does for biodiversity, the more we can pay him. Scientists and conservation experts collaborated with local farmers to create the Burn Life Programme. Such was the success of this approach that it was adopted by the Department of Agriculture and the National Parks and Wildlife Service and expanded to 150 farms in what's now called the Burn Farming for Conservation Programme. Pat McCormack is one of the farmers who contributed his farming knowledge. He farms organically with an eye on protecting biodiversity and he has conserved an important archaeological site on his land. So how's the Burn Farm Conservation Project working out for you? Yes, that's a wonderful scheme because it, it's paying farmers on, on, um, on performance, and performance is, is, is to what they're doing in the landscape. You can see an area here, this fort, Cahirmore. You know, if you come up here three years ago, you couldn't see that fort, it was, it was all encroached with scrub, but we cleared off that. We have a number of wild goats here that are maintaining and, and, and eating back that, that type of scrub, the, the black thorn and hazel, which were, well, which was, was, was breaking up the stones, but visually you could not see it. Like. Traditionally, in the barn, cattle were taken off these lands for the, for the summertime and let the grass bank up, and the cattle would be put up here actually in, in October, November, and left here for the, the winter time. The Burn Farming for Conservation programme offers a new template to the whole country for finding solutions to problems in farming based on local expertise and for financially rewarding farmers for working in harmony with nature. I think it's, it's, it's such an important, wonderful, dramatic landscape for the sake of future generations. In other words, to hand back what we received the way we got it.